up, YouTube? Welcome back, traders. It's your matter of fact. I'm gonna make sure to get the whole video this time. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back, traders. Hold on, man. You see what I'm doing? What were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> see, that's gonna be a part of the bloopers. Now we can make it funny. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back, traders. It's your boy, the Forex Bully, Safe Trader Forex, chilling here with Chaos Trader 63. We about to get into a quick little forest lifestyle video if you don't mind please like the video subscribe and comment down below on what kind of content you like to see from us in, in the near future without any further ado let's get into the introduction All right, guys, before I get started, just want to make sure that you do see my disclosure statement here and do understand that I am not an investment advisor. Everything that I show you today is for educational purposes only. And um, if you decide to take up on anything that I am doing today and decide to take up on any trades that I may talk about, please do consult with your own personal financial advisor so they can help you to understand and consider the all relevant risk factors when trading the futures market or any market to that matter. As always, before I get started, I like to give a little word, um, a little encouragement and a little word from the Lord. So I'm looking at John 16, verse 33. It says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. This passage summarizes the general message that hardship and perse persecution will come to us. But as believers, we should remain faithful, knowing this is all part of God's knowledge and his will. All right. So becoming a Christian does not guarantee an easy life for us. In fact, Jesus made it clear that following him can lead to persecution, as stated in John 16, 1, 4, verses 1 and 4, 1 through 4. In this life, we deal with trials of sickness, tragedy, natural disasters, and malevolence. And yet, for us Christians, we're able to walk through it all with peace and purpose. The peace Jesus speaks of, it's not worldly comfort or even happiness. This is the confidence, the rest, that believers experience when they set aside anxiety and trust God to work out his will. So the expression, take heart, implies courage. Knowing Christ's victory overshadows all those troubles. Rather than reacting in panic or doubt, followers of Christ should feel a sense of peace. This confidence is inspired by knowledge that nothing they experience catches God by surprise. All right. If we remember that and remember that the ultimate victory has already been won, we can claim the peace of Christ. And the most troublesome times. God bless you. All right, guys, I am ready to show you what I believe is the best Ichimoku day trading strategy. This is a strategy that I've been using that I use to day trade the markets. Pretty much I day trade the futures market, um, trading a lot of the ES and the NQ. So the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. And Trading that on a 2000 tick chart, I find that I have fantastic trades and I want to be able to show you guys how I trade this. This is very simple and very easy. Now, I am also going to show you how to enhance this technique that I show you today. So today I'm going to show you the technique and the trading strategy and everything, but I'm going to show you on my next video how to really enhance this and to make it even a stronger trade entry for you. All right. So you do want to get notified of that and you do want to be able to see this, that next video because it's going to make this strategy even better. So after you see what I'm going to show you today, you're going to be like, OK, that looks pretty good. But then after you see what we're going to do to make it better, you're going to be like, wow, this is mind blowing. All right. So that's where we want to go with this thing. So let's just get started. But before we get started, we definitely need to understand and know certain aspects of Ichimoku. And this is what you're looking at is Ichimoku right here. This is an Ichimoku chart. All right. So it's called a, a, a graph. 
in Japanese really, but here we go. We need to understand a few things if we're going to trade this system. All right. And um, one of them is the five parts of this system. Now, actually, we're not going to really use all these. So what we're going to be really focused on mainly, um, our main tool is going to be this right here. But this is also going to be involved. And then overall, we're going to be looking at this whole thing, which would be our cloud. So we're going to be concerned about the main aspect here, but it also involves Kijinsen, but it involves single span and single span A and B, which is going to be your cloud basically. So not really the spans, but just the, the cloud, the reference of the cloud. All right. So we want to talk about those things to help you to be able to understand what we're going to be looking at and how we're going to make these trades. So the first thing is Tinkinson. It's also known as, known as your conversion line or your turning line. Okay. And basically what it is, it's the highest high and the lowest low over the past nine periods divided by two. Then we have your Kijinsen, which is also known as your reference line, baseline or standard line, highest high and lowest low over the past 26 periods divided by two. These two are basically the exact same. One is nine periods and the other one's 26 periods. So if they were the same periods, they would show the exact same line, just look to pretty much like a moving average. So you take a nine period moving average and a 26 period moving average, make that 26 and nine, and it'll be the exact same as the nine. Only thing is these times are different. Uh, these times are a little bit different than e these times are different than each other, not a little bit different. They are different than each other. And also what makes them different than a, a moving average is that um, we're not using the, the um, close. We're using the high and low which then gives us a, a, a flat level sometime where we have strong support and resistance. All right. So we're not going to talk much about the spam because we're going to look at that when we get to the chart. All right. So we want to know and understand that this Tinkinson is the fastest response to price among the five Ichimoku lines. And it's the basis for our now analysis. It's going to be the basis for our entry also. All right. So let's take a look at how we're going to get into these trades, what we're going to do. All right. So the first thing that you're going to look at is you want to first understand and know one, what does your cloud tell you? And then two, your TK crossover, which is right there. So you want to see this green line, which is your Tinkinson and this blue line, which is your Kijinsen. So we just talked about those in between these two areas is known as your TK zone. All right. I call this the TK zone. And inside that zone is where we are really looking for our trade. But in all actuality, this becomes our signal. Once price drops into the zone, it becomes our signal. So currently you have price outside of this TK zone be above this Tinkinson line here. So at this point, we don't do anything while it's above that level. You don't get into any trades. You're not missing anything. So don't get into trades while it's above that level. And I'm going to tell you one other big reason why not to get into trades while it's above that level, because first of all, this level and this level are levels of equilibrium. This is a nine period equilibrium and this is a uh, 26 period equilibrium, a little bit longer. So if the market is getting out of equilibrium. You don't want to be trading while it's getting out of equilibrium. You want to be trading when it's in equilibrium because when it's in equilibrium, it's going to explode to out of equilibrium, which means it's going to make a, a, a move. All right. So somebody on YouTube said about me, um, why so much uh, trading tight ranges, blah, blah, blah. All right. But really that person didn't understand that really a move comes from a tight range. All right. And that's where you get that explosive move coming from a tight range. All right. So that's why you're trading tight range areas, because that's where the explosive move is. And also that's where your best stop losses are going to be. All right. So that's one thing. Um, the next thing, what do I want to tell you guys next? I want to explain this so that you really understand. Um, but next, let's look at what's happening. So first of all, like I said, we have price outside of the cloud. I mean, outside of the TK zone here. So we're above this green line, which is my Tinkinson. That's the main analysis that we're going to be looking at and thinking. So the first thing we always want to say, what does our cloud tell us? If it's blue, 
or if it's your crossover developed, you 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 had your um Kumo twist, then you want to say we're bullish. Cause so in this case, my cloud is blue when it's bullish, and then it'll be pink when it's bearish. All right. So if this cloud is bullish, I always want to trade to the upside, no matter what anything else is telling me, even my crossover. So if my crossover was bearish, as in this case, I still want to be bullish because look, you had a crossover here that was bearish, but you still had a market that was bullish off of the bounce of the support level of your resistance band here or your Kumo or your cloud. All right. So the bottom of this resistance band was, was support and the market went higher. All right. So therefore it stayed longer term bullish, shorter term bearish, but we want to trade the longer term trend and we want to get the shorter term momentum. So that's how we're going to trade this. So let's go to the next slide. Talk about what we got going on. I'll show you a bunch of my trade setups that were taken and then so forth. All right. So Um, here price drops into the um, cloud now. So we knocked the cloud, sorry, into the TK zone. So actually what we're really concerned about, we already decided what our bias was. So we want to understand what's the cloud telling us. Number one, it's telling us bullish. All right. What's the crossover telling us? Number two, it's telling us bullish. All right. So therefore, once price drops back below this green line, which is your Tinkinson, this is now a signal. We got a signal. All right. So now price is inside this area. We're looking for a trade. The best place to take a trade is at the Kijinsen level. A lot of times in a very strong trend, the market is not coming back to this Kijinsen level, barely come back to the Tinkinson level. So therefore, we want to be able to catch these trades. And when I talk to you later in my next video, how to maximize this thing, how to make it more efficient, you're going to be able to catch trades anywhere no matter if it does come back to Tinkinson or not. But I always wait for the pullback to Tinkinson and then for my signal. Now, I'm going to again show you another way how to have even a stronger signal on my very next video after this. So stay tuned for that. But anyway, um, let's move on. All right. So price drops into this TK zone. This is our signal. So waiting for price to break back above the Tinkinson to show that momentum. So when you get the momentum building, you're going to break this short term momentum area. This is a longer term momentum. This is shorter term momentum. But now we're inside this zone. This is the best area to trade. And our ultimate last trade is when we close above this level. That's where we definitely want to be in the trade. Sometime you're going to see the market come back and bounce off of this Kedinson level or get inside this area where you could trade. I'm not going to talk about that trade so much today or the opportunities while we're inside this level today. I'm going to talk more about the main easiest trade is just wait for price to close above key, your Tinkinson level here, right? So that's what you're waiting for now. So you wait for that trade to set place. And there you go. Boom. Price closed above. You take the entry right there. Now this candle is super big. So a lot of times what I, here's how I trade this. I actually enter, use this level as my stop loss. I use the candle that I enter on as my stop loss. If it's too big, then you don't enter the trade or else you reduce your contracts size or, or else basically you can't enter a trade if it can't fit into your money management. All right. And then what I do, um, I'll shoot for my one to one measured move and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But since we got our entry here, this is where we enter the market, guys. Stop loss and watch to see what the market does. All right. And in this case. The market gave you six point five points. All right which is on the ES $325. So that was a $325 trade just that quickly because these are 2000 tick charts. So that trade ended up to be $325 if you were able to take that trade. All right. So we shoot for the one to one. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's move on. So looking at this slide here, you could see 
one opportunity right here where the market broke above your Tinkinson level. That's where you enter the trade, put your stop loss down below the candle. And then you, we would shoot for our one to one and we hit that one to one for sure. Now there's another way to trade this also. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Here was another entry here. Didn't give you much profit. If it did, then stopped you out really. So that might not have been a good trade here, but then you give you another opportunity here. You would enter right here, stop loss down here. You would have made profit there. Then the market gave you a really nice opportunity here where the market closed above your Tinkinson again. And then you put your stop loss down here and then you could see the profit that you would have gotten on that trade. All right. So waiting for the market to get inside of our, our area where we're looking to get our trade. So our future is bright. That's the number one thing we want to look at. That's the first thing we want to take notice of. What does our what does our future tell us? It tells us bullish. What does the future cloud tell us? It tells us bullish. What is our crossover? It's bullish. Then what do we do? We look for the long trade. All right. So now we wait for the price to drop inside the TK zone here. This is the TK zone. And this is where we want to get into our trade. But in the way we're, tr we're trading it today, the first basic setup is we want to wait for a close outside of the TK zone, which is actually ab above your Tinkinson in this case. All right. So let's look at what we got going on next. Price drops back into the zone here. Price is in our zone. And then now we just wait for the price to close above the zone and you enter to the trade. So you have your signal. Now you're waiting on your trigger and then boom. Let's look at this setup. This was today's trading. Matter of fact, this was today. What happened today? Um, and you could see, boom, one entry there, another entry here, another entry here, another here, another here. One, two, three, four, five entries within from 1107 till 13 till uh, actually, sorry, 550. So 550, not sorry, 350. So you had one, two, three, four, five trades within that time frame, And then every single trade was a good trade that would have yielded good profit. Now we talked about how can you maximize this trade? All right. Instead of going for your one-to-one -one, and we're going to talk about the one-to-one -one a little bit in a little while, if you have the nerve and if you're able to, um, if you can stay in the trade until it closes back down below Tinkinson, which would have been right here, you would make big profit. I find that I don't have the nerve most of the time. I can usually do that if I'm trading uh, maybe like on the daily time frame in a different asset. If I'm day trading, it's very hard for me to do because on moves like this, this is a, probably a big $200 move dropping to the downside sometime. All right. And so that really hurts you and you're like $200. I'm up 500 and I'm going to lose 200 here. And sometime you end up taking the profit. But if you have the nerve and are able to stay in the trade, that's what you should do. Stay in the trade till you close below Tinkinson. Now, again, I'm going to show you how to even maximize that. Also, I'm going to maximize your entries and your exits on my next video. So please do watch out for that. All right. So let's look at a couple entries that I had today. This was a trade that I took today. So on this trade, um, let me mark this for you and show you what it's showing you. So here was my entry. I entered here and I'm going to talk about why I entered there. This was the candle I entered on and I exited right here. This was the candle I exited on. Why I, did I get into this trade? Well, my future was bright at this time. So this was where we were. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. You see, we're already bright on 17 and we're 26 into the future. We were already bullish. So I was bullish. This was a support level for me, the Kijinsen. So this actually was more of a Kijinsen bounce trade where I took the trade. All right. And also when I took this trade, I was using uh, another tool that I'm going to show you how to maximize your entry. And then I got my entry. I took my entry there and then the market moved higher. But now again, if you take the trades that I'm showing you, 
you would have entered the market right at the close of this candle with a stop loss right here. You want to be a little bit below that level. Never be exactly on the level of the stop of your um, candle that you're using as your stop loss because the market likes to come down to that level. So I got into this trade profit quickly and then it dropped down on me. I was kind of actually I didn't get in here. Sorry, I got in here. So this was the reason why I was able to stay in the trade because I got in here. Now, had I gotten in here, I don't know if I would have been able to. I, I don't usually let it come back to my stop loss. I don't take the big loss and then I probably wouldn't have made this trade. But since I got in here, I did go into a little drawdown, but overall it pulled out and followed real well. Now, when you get into the trade of breaking Tinkinson level, that's where you build up your momentum. And that's why this is a good trade to take. And that's why if you don't have the momentum right away, that's why your stop loss is the lower part of your candle. No need to sit in this trade and wait to try to see if you get it back. You don't have the momentum. Get out of the trade. All right. And this is where I ended up for a $980 trade today. Um, and I had taken a previous trade, maybe like 830 this morning. And I lost like $120 on that. And I made 980 after that. And that was all I traded today. All right. So that's what we had today happening for us. Looked pretty good. Made a nice profit on the very beginning of the day and didn't really have to trade much more throughout the day. All right. And actually, I didn't trade any at all anymore throughout the day today. Um, so one thing to always take notice of is the market movement. So when you watch the market, the market moves in waves and it doesn't matter what time frame we're talking about. The market is fractal by nature. It does the same thing on every single time frame, just on a smaller scale. So you may see a big end wave, which is part of a smaller end wave, which is part of a smaller, bigger end wave, which is part of another bigger end wave until you get down to the lower time frames. But the end wave is actually this red line here. You can see how the market moves in end waves and I'm going to draw it out for you. So this market moves in these waves, these end waves. It does on all time frames. And then when it's it's it kind of moves into a point where it doesn't look like it's moving in an end wave, then it becomes a P wave or a Y wave more, more than likely. All right. But this is something that you're going to really want to take notice of because these end waves have a numbering system, basically. So it's going to be one, two, three and then four. And I always, always, always want to trade at three. I never want to trade at two. But so many people are trade taught to trade at two. Two is a fluctuation level. So two is a level where you could probably get is the worst spot to take the trade because that's where the market could range. All right. And could pull back and so forth. All right. This is the best area to take the trade. And whenever we take a trade, that three is automatically automatically going to be in our area. All right. And I'll show you as we go on. Um. So we're going to we're talking about the end wave and then now we're talking about the one to one measured move. What is the one to one measured move? This is how you're going to know to take your profit and your your target. And we'll see more about this in a couple trade setups that I take. But this leg here, let's say this leg here was. Um, let's say it was six points, right? Then we expect this leg right here to be about six points. All right. So this is going to be six plus six. And that's where your target would be. So you're figuring it to be about six points or something like that. So you look at that, measure this and then measure your pullback. And then it will automatically give you this target level here. So I'm using my fib, um, my fib tool to get this. I'm using my fib extension tool to get these numbers. And the one to one is the number that I'm concerned about. I'm not worried about these other numbers. All right. I'm just worried about this one to one measured move right here because that's where I'm looking to take my profit. All right. And you can see the market pulled right down to that level. So now we're looking at the market closing above Tinkinson. So this is now we were sitting outside of this TK zone, but now we closed inside the TK zone. This is our signal, not our trigger. It's a signal to start being ready to get into a trade. So it lets you know that now you're looking at possibly getting into a trade. All right. 
and then you could see the red candle closed below Tinkinson and outside of the TK zone. So that's where we short the market right there. So if we're going to short the market, we're going to short the market right on the close here with a stop loss right a little bit above and look for our target. We'll talk about the one to one. So in this case, um, the one to one measured move would have been something like this. Actually, I'm wrong here. My fault. I marked from the wrong spot. Let's erase that and show you where it is. So the one to one start because here you have this high here, then this high and I actually go by fractals. So this would be the next. So it moves down up and then shooting for that other end leg. So this would be our profit down here. All right. So that's how you would find your target with the one to one measure move. The market's not always going to do it. So I can't give you anything that's guaranteed in the market. So don't expect that from me because you won't get it. I don't give any guarantees. I just give you probabilities. Probabilities are good. Guarantees are great, <laughs> but I can't guarantee anything. So anyway, we like I said, just showed you, we would get into this trade and then this would be our target right here. We would shoot for this one to one target down here. All right. Place your stop loss above the current candle high and then measure your one to one wave. Once you get into profit, you can start trailing your stop loss to the previous candle high. So here's my profit already. 150 took this trade and then the market would be stop loss would be at each candle um, high because we're going to the downside. So now you can see. 150. Now we're in the 325 market moving lower. We're trailing that stop loss, shooting for a one to one target here. Made a little bit more profit shooting for that one to one target. This is our one to one target. Still trying to get that profit target down here. And then the market moves, hit the trailing stop loss and we're good for our profit and hit our target. So what you want to look for when you're entering these trades, you want to look at the Kumo suggesting, right? So your Kumo is suggesting number one, you're looking for a long entry and number two, TK crossing. So on this, you're looking for um, basically like we talked about looking for number one. This tells us bullish. Number two, your crossover tells us bearish. I mean, sorry, bullish. What am I saying? So we got a bullish cloud or a bullish future. So we're bullish there. We got a bullish crossover. So we're bullish there. No matter what else is anything else is telling us, this is the main thing we want to look at and, and abide by. Price is inside the TK zone. We're going to look for an opportunity to trade this market. So what is your Kumo suggesting to you? It's suggesting bullish. What is your crossover suggesting? It's suggesting bullish. So what do you look for? You look for your long trade. And then you already know your stop loss and you know how to find your targets. Now, another way to find targets is basically if you have a set target that you want to get into or maybe you look to your left for support and resistance levels. I'm not going to talk much about targets and so forth, but you can find how to get targets that you want to hit. So, again, looking at what we're looking at, our suggestion of what the market Ichimoku is telling us. All right. So what is Ichimoku telling us right now? What is this cloud telling us at this point? This cloud is telling us bullish at this point. What is this crossover telling us at this point? This crossover is telling us bullish. All right. And sorry, this crossover is telling us bearish my my bag. So this is a red cloud. It's telling us bearish. bearish cr cloud and a bullish crossover. What do we listen to? We listen to what this cloud is telling us. All right. Because price never really closed above this cloud, which is the main thing. All right. And it didn't close above that cloud. So we suggest to stay bearish at this point. OK, so let's look and see what happens with this opportunity. If we ever would have taken this opportunity, what would have happened to us? The market dropped to the downside pretty good. Your cloud suggested bearish, but your future, I mean, your crossover was bullish and it's still bullish at this point, but you could see what happened to the market. OK. And this is your trend line. Tinkinson, Kijinson is like your trend line. 
the market broke back down by the trend line once it gets below that trend line you're looking for that entry or else price action entry short because you already know what the cloud is suggesting to you so the area between the Tenkinson and the Kijinson is the TK zone um, it's the best area to take the trade all right here you see same this is where we're looking to take the trade now a person would say how come this guy is trading so tight blah 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 I'm trading so tight because explosive moves come off of these tight ranges all right and as you can see here took the trade now at this point we didn't get past this two level and that's an issue for me it really shouldn't take a trade right at the two level but we took a trade at the two level and price gave us a little bit of profit 187 got up to 200 here you can see we had a bullish future but a bearish TK crossover what's our bias at this point what are we supposed to be looking to trade at this point you should be looking to trade long at this point because your future is what's telling you what to do now same same chart then you can see what's starting to happen the bands often support and resistance and our bias is still bullish because we didn't cross we didn't get our twist yet all right even though we're bearish here we remain bullish until this twist over all right because this now is the support and resistance level for us and all this is is basically level one support and resistance level two level three level four all right so this is your final support level for this market right now and we failed to get through there we still were bullish we should look for long trades all right maybe suggesting when you get above Kijinson which is your your um, this Kijinson which is your trend line your natural trend line Ichimoku trend line that's where we would look for our trade and here you can see what happened we broke Tenkinson your Kijinson level we broke that key trend line like I said we got into the trade all right can see what happened we're at 375 making 375 profit I believe I don't know if I put this as the one-to-one -one measured move I'm not sure if I marked it here um, here's another opportunity all right another buy price closed above Tinkinson all right we had a crossover which was bullish but our future was bright that's the main thing all right and also we had another major thing take place price bounced off of these fractal levels right here this fractal level all right so that was a main thing here so we took the trade but we lost the trade this was a losing trade um, I got out of this trade before it hit my stop loss I think and then here's another opportunity all right so this was a little bit different this was nice price action at the resistance band where we had an indecision candle right so this indecision candle what was our future telling us it was telling us bullish and even our our crossover was bullish so we want to get this trade as close to this Kijinson as level as possible because that will eliminate a lot of risk for us all right the risk is going to be your main risk is going to be like if you take a trade here in this area your risk is really down to Kijinson but it's actually going to be just the candle that you enter on all right that will be your risk now sometimes that's a big candle and a lot of times the market can come back to Kijinson because that's a strong support and resistance level so let's see moving forward our trade is triggered all right we get into the trade off of this indecision candle we broke that high so we entered the trade so here you see basically institutional traders pushing this price right back down below the law of the, the indecision candle why why because they know there are longs in this area and they're searching for volatility in the form of these stop losses all down here and it pushed right down to this level here to pick up all these stop losses that were placed right down here all right so those are things you got to watch out the market does a lot of crazy stuff during the day a lot of things you'll learn about price action as far as looking at a single candle 
you'll kind of know that these this market, especially the the Nasdaq, likes to push back. You'll see these candles push all the way back, and the next thing you know, the main thing to look for is the close of the candle. Don't worry about what it does between the period where it's moving back and forth and so forth. That last couple seconds before that candle closes, that's near the most important time of that candle. Now, you could see here 437 on this trade. So we entered here. We got a little pushback, but we were slightly below this level here. Normally, I would be about right at this ca uh, candle, but I had this support level of the band here. So I figured I might as well be below that level. Then you could see what happens 437 shooting for that. I believe that's the one to one. We move the stop loss below the low of the indecision candle because what we do is try to trail these stop losses. But once we get an indecision candle, we move it to the low of that candle. And we targeted the one to one measured move here. So this was the one to one measured move. We were below the low of that um, indecision candle. We didn't get stopped out. And then the market pushed a little higher. Did we get to this measured move? Trail your stop loss. You can see I'm trailing that stop loss. It's sitting where it was. Still shooting for that one-to-one -one measured move. And we didn't get it. We broke the low of the previous candle. So we're out of the trade with a good profit. Here we were at 537.50. Probably dropped down a little bit lower than that. But took us out and we made nice profit on that trade. All right. Here we see a bearish TK cross with a bearish future. Once price breaks the Kumo, we want to see a correction. In this case, we see the um, correction back up to the Kumo. So when price, if you get a change of direction, your change of, change of direction is when your future changes and you got a bearish crossover. So if your future changes, doesn't change, but you get a bearish crossover, you're still going to be bullish. But in this case, the future changed to bearish. Your crossover was bearish. So what you want to see is a correction. You want to see that, that V wave, which is the one third, which is the two thirds of an N wave. So you have your V wave pushing up and then you go for that level. In this case, we got the correction. So now we could short below key your Tinkinson level here. So we now can look for the short. If you don't correct after you get a, a change of direction move, do not take any trades until you get that correction. Hopefully I get to show you a couple more um, like that so you can really understand not to trade until you get the correction to determine the direction of the market. With this bearish engulfing, I'm entering the market and I'm shooting for my one-to-one -one measured move right here. You can see where I measured it from this level here, the one-to-one -one measured move. One, two, three, and we're shooting for four, the one-to-one -one measured move. All right, so that's how I find my targets. I always need to get through the two level. We need to get past this level for our trade to continue. If it gets past that level, then we shoot for that level. If we can't get past this level, we're going to take profit and look for another trade. All right. And here you can see we're in profit 312 shooting for this um, candle down here. And market continues to move to the downside, shooting for a one to one. Pretty close to the one to one. I believe we hit the one to one on this trade. Price is right at the one to one measure move, about to stop us out for a 637 gain. Interesting position to be in, and why do I say this? Because basically, you can move the target lower and continue to walk the stop loss down. So you can actually ha have your stop loss right here, and if the market doesn't go any lower and comes back and stops you out, you're giving it a chance to go lower than this because it could continue to go lower. So if your next candle went lower, you take this stop loss and bring it to the downside and you're breaking this low, you're going to make more profit. But in this case, you make sure you locked up profit and giving it a chance to run a little bit more. And in this case, we hit that one measured move and took the profit there and boom, we're, we're good. And you can see price closed at the measured move level. So we maximized our profit. And if we did have it up here, we would have got stopped out at that point anyway. All right. So again, another opportunity. We got price moving to the downside. What is our future telling us? It's telling us bearish. Even our crossover is bearish. So price went into the zone, closes outside of the zone. We look for our trade, set the one-to-one -one measured move, one, two, three, four. And this is going to be our target. Um, you could see no profit at this point, 
But then, boom, the market hits the measure move. We make profit. We're filled. We're good to go. Again, another opportunity. Our bias remains bullish, but the crossover was also bullish. So we had everything that we needed in, in this place at this time. So we look for a long opportunity. The market was flat here a little bit. You could see we had a nice bounce off of Kijinson. But in this case, we're still looking for the market to close above to get into the trade. Now, I actually took this trade because we had a nice price action entry. All right. And then this would have been the actual trade here. But, but at this point, I'm already 150 into the trade. So normally, based off of what I'm showing you, we would enter the trade at this point. But again, bouncing off of Kijinson, I'm already 150 in the into the trade. All right. So we, like I said, a possible long would have been this trade here. And taking my trade here allowed for the least, as much least risk as possible. My, my risk increased as I m went to this level. But still, that's your opportunity because that's showing you the momentum buildup. All right, you can see we're making a little bit of profit. And then price failed to break out of the Kumo and now we're closing below the previous low. So we took a $25 loss on a $250, I mean a $200 trade. When I'm, tr when I'm day trading and I find I hit targets like that, I find that it's best to take that profit. Don't try to hit the home runs. Don't try to be grand slam every single time you come up the bat. Take them singles and eventually that builds up. So that turned into a loss. All right. And sometimes it's so hard to determine because just where your entry is. And then now on my, in my case, I had a lot of room to play with this. So it did turn into a $25 loss. But in this case, if you taken it up here, it would have been much bigger of a loss. So my risk was eliminated. I did lose $25 after making 200, but I wanted to give this trade a chance to move and it didn't. And then you never really know where to get out of this thing. And you definitely have your level where you for sure you want to get out. But once it closes below that low, I've lost momentum. So what were some bad signs of this trade that I just took, right? What were some bad signs on this trade? One of the bad signs was this flat level, this flat key, uh, Kumo. All right. Very flat. Look at my flat Tinkinson. Look at my flat Kijinson. Everything is flat. So there's no momentum, but eventually market's going to break out into momentum. All right. So at this point, what is your bias? The market's getting ready to break below the cloud. What's your bias? Don't guess the market. Trade what it is. What is it at this point? We have a bearish TK crossover, but we also still have a bright future. What do we trade right now? We trade long. All right. Some people might say don't trade at all. That would be a good thing too because you really maybe are a little flat and ranging but since the kumo's bullish we're bullish that's where we're going to take our tr our trade price found support at the kumo and created a bullish engulfing nice entry long so we trade long entries placed here stop loss slightly below shooting for our target i don't believe that was the target but we'll see this is a scary point in the trade right so again, remember the previous trade pulled back. We had about the same amount of profit and then lost that profit. So should we take that profit here? If price fails to break that Kumo, we're in trouble. And then the market breaks down. It's hard to really know when to take that profit if, when we're just getting into the trade. Um, we can move the stop loss up to the current bear fractal and measure that one to one measured move. And that's where we would shoot for our target. And you can see price pull back a little bit. Close with two small tweezers below the low. Stopped out for decent profit. All right. At this point, you want to understand the directional bias. So what is the directional bias? Your directional bias is what? Bullish, right? Even though the bias is bullish, we need a reason to enter a trade. Mainly price action. We have a bullish trade, but we don't have anything giving us an opportunity to trade here. We didn't close above our Tinkinson level. 
and at the support level of the cloud we don't have any kind of price action all right what is your bias now it looks very much bearish to the human eye or maybe it's flat it might look like to you but there's one thing to follow follow your kumo that's the direction you want to be trading and if you would listen to that you see what would happen the market breaks up to the upside all right backwards again you could see if you would just listen to what this is telling you you would see that that's what happens this is support here and we didn't get a kumo twist we're still bullish even though we look to be flat we're going to break out of a range eventually and boom there you go and then price set up for a nice block trade all right so this was a nice order block level here because you had a bullish engulfing with this candle here that was a nice order block level so we set our buy limit we already put our buy limit we already put our buy limit in here and this is where we'll be looking for our opportunity to go long to the market the market pulls down to the $75 level well sorry the market pulls down to our order block level and we have $75 profit already as the market bounced on this level we put our entry in before the market got to that level all right and as the market got to that level we trusted the order block market drops down to this level and this isn't much more of what I'm really talking about today this wasn't something that I um, really should have been talking to you about today but in all aspects of this trade you can see we close above Tinkinson and that's where you would enter your trade anyway and then we shot for the one-to-one -one. we hit that one-to-one -one. didn't show the profit on this trade but we hit that one-to-one -one level there now here again we see the previous order block remains intact for a trade opportunity our bias is bearish because the first future suggests our our first our future <laughs> our future is suggesting downside all right and the crossover is bearish so that's what we're looking at at this point so our crossover is bearish and we got a bearish future the main thing though is our future which is bearish now we're bouncing off of a fractal level also which is mainly important too so the market pulls back up into this um, order block level we go one to one shooting for our target now mainly again we're close to our keys and we're inside the tk zone with this block this block let fell right inside our tk zone this was a good opportunity to take the trade you had a bearish engulfing you'd be able to take that trade and go for your one to one measured move so you would be basically shooting for the target which would have been boom 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 and shoot for your target that's where you're shooting for your target that's your trade right there all right so we're in the trade price pulls back a little bit we stay with the trade breaks the two level that's the main thing we got through that two level this is confirmation for us to stay with that trade that we are in a good trend to the downside we're shooting close to that one-to-one -one measure move we're at 587 right now close to the measured move and it's very hard to get a trade like this because of all the price manipulation per candle you see so many things happening with these candles that you just fail to be able to stay into the trade because it takes a lot of your profit all right and it scares you out of the trade only to go back your way so if price closes back inside the TK zone, then you want to exit your trade. So if you close back above Tinkins, then you definitely want to be out of your trade for sure. And now we stayed below, so we're still shooting for that one-to-one -one measured move. All right. We're very close to the one-to-one -one measured move, $700 profit. And we hit that target. We broke the one-to-one -one measured move, hit the target. So again, the bias here was, is what? It's bearish and price created in decision candle inside the TK zone right at Kijinson. So this isn't our main trade that we're talking about, but since I have price right at this level with a nice indecision candle price action and I'm right at this trend line, I'm taking a trade here. Now the trade would really be waiting for the close below Tinkinson. But here I'm taking the trade. It eliminates a lot of my risk. All right, so let's see. We're into the trade, eliminating a lot of my risk. Otherwise, we'd be waiting for the close here. We'd be into the trade now, 
But at this point, I'm already two hundred dollars above uh, uh, above where you would be entering the trade now. All right. So I'm already two hundred dollars ahead. Then you could see the market moving lower. Three hundred dollar profit. Back to one eighty seven. Came back for almost half of our profit. I think it's best to take profit at that point. And the market moved a little higher. Hopefully we would have taken our profit on that. So here we have a bearish TK crossover. So a trade I would take because price is close to the crossover. I normally don't take TK crossovers. So what I'm talking about is a bearish TK crossover. But my future is bright. So always listen to what this is telling us. So we wouldn't take any trade right now to the um, downside because our future is still bright, waiting for it to turn bearish. All right. So a lot of times you want, you're going to want to take a trade, but you need to wait for everything to tell you wh when to take a trade. All right. Listen to what the market tells you. So this trade would have worked out anyway, but again, we had to follow the rules of the trade. So therefore we don't get that trade. We had two price action entries opportunities here. Um, and we didn't take them. So now we have to wait for price to close outside the Tinkinson. Price closes outside the Tinkinson. So we short this, look for the one-to-one -one measured move. This is your target right there. Price closed back above Tinkinson. So we're out of the trade for a small loss. Close back above Tinkinson level. Here we have a bearish future and price closing below Kizinson, so we can short the market right now. All right. In this case, price closed above the Kumo with a bullish TK cross. When price closed back below the Kijin, we need to have the TK cross confirm at least once when price breaks below the Kumo, so we then can take the trade. All right. So in this case, we broke, pulled back, got a crossover, got a rejection candle at the cloud. We're able to take the trade at this point. We're below Tinkinson. This is where we're going to shoot for the target, our entry. So we get our entry here. We're flat a little bit, consolidating, and then we break out out of consolidation. Why am I trading tight range markets? Because that's where the explosive moves happen. So price pushes to the one to one level pretty close to the level we're at 350 and then we break that level we hit the one-to-one -one target there um, in this case another opportunity price closed below our Tinkinson so we're into the trade place our sale order with a stop loss above the candle high and target that one-to-one -one level right here price is pushing close to that one-to-one -one level Pushing closer to that one-to-one -one level with a 362 profit. And then price pushed very close to that level. And I don't know if I got to the end of this or what, but that was the trade. At least $400 right here. But again, that's the trade setup. Um, all you're looking for is price to close outside your Tinkinson. So when you're looking for a short trade, you want to close below Tinkinson. When you're looking for a long trade, you want to close above Tinkinson. All right. And you always want to confirm what your cloud is telling you to go that direction. And then you look for your trade. You'll normally have your crossover. They should really line up pretty much. All right. And then once you have that, you trade basic trade, right? Very easy trade. And I make a lot of profit daily trading this strategy. Now I do add another tool to make this even stronger. So what I'm going to do is show you that tool on my next um, video. So I'll talk about this again, but I'll show you how to maximize this and make it even better. So guys, hopefully this is helping you out and I'm pretty much done now. So God bless you. Have a great one. So long.